there, I'm Caroline. Today we're going to start using parts and whole to solve a new kind of math problem. In our last lesson, you helped me think about parts and whole to figure out how much fruit I had. Those apples and oranges were so tasty that I decided to eat some more fruit for breakfast today. Here's the problem. I started to slice up some watermelons and kiwis, but I kind of lost count. I know I had three watermelon slices and two kiwi slices, but I don't remember how many I had in all. Do you think we can use these parts to find the whole? Let's find out. Before we get started, let's go over our goals for this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use parts and whole to add. You should also be able to use strategies like counting up and counting on to add. Lastly, you should be able to use a number line. We'll start by reviewing parts and whole. Then we'll learn about addition. Lastly, we'll practice adding with some different tools and strategies. Let's get started. In our last lesson, we learned how to think about a number as a whole made of parts. The whole tells us how many there are in all. The parts are the smaller pieces that the whole is made of. Now, let's try to show how many watermelon and kiwi slices we have on this number bond. We don't know the whole, but we do know the parts. What are the two parts we're working with? There are three watermelon slices and two kiwi slices, so our parts are three and two. We don't know the whole right now, but we do know the parts. We also know that a whole is made of parts. So, what can we do to find the whole? We can put these parts together to find the whole. You can follow along with me here, or use your own counters to make these parts. Let's count to find how many are in this whole group. One, two, three, four, five. So our parts are two and three, and our whole is five. Nice thinking. We just solved this problem using a kind of math called addition. Addition or adding is when we put parts together to make a whole. There are some special math symbols we can use to show addition problems too. This is called a plus sign. It goes between the parts that we're adding together. We added the parts three and two together, and we can show that by putting the plus sign between them. Now this says three plus two. The other symbol we use is called an equals sign. It tells us what those parts are equal to or the same as. We know our parts three and two put together have the same value as the whole five. So we can use five to finish this addition sentence. Now this says three plus two equals five. We solved this problem using a strategy called counting up. We looked at all the parts and counted them all up to find the whole. That isn't the only way we can solve addition problems, though. Counting on is another strategy we can use. Instead of recounting everything, we'll start to count from a part we already know. I like to start with the biggest part, so I'll start with the three slices of watermelon. Let's use a number line to help us count. Since we're starting with the part three, we'll start counting from three as well. We're adding three plus two. So we'll count on two more. One, two. What number did we land on? Five. Is that the same answer we found when we solved this problem by counting up? Yes, it is. 
There are lots of different strategies you can use to solve math problems. Now we know that three watermelon slices plus two kiwi slices equals five slices of fruit in all. Nice thinking. Let's try one more problem together. Next, we'll add together some pears and strawberries. This addition sentence tells us how many of each part we have. Try reading this out loud to yourself. This says one plus three. We can add these parts together to find the whole. Remember, there are lots of ways to solve addition problems. Pause the video here and try to solve this problem by yourself. Now let's solve one plus three together. I'm going to start by counting on using this number line. We can start with either part and get the same answer. So I'm going to start at three and count on one more number. When we count on, we land on four on the number line. That means that one plus three. Should equal four, right? Let's double check by counting up all the parts too. Here are our three strawberries and our one pear. Let's count up everything here. One, two, three, four. We found the same answer. We can also find this answer by holding up three fingers. Then adding one more, or even by using counters to build both parts. No matter how we solve it, we'll find that one plus three equals four. Using different strategies can help you check your work and make sure your answer is correct. Nice work today! Now you can think about the parts and whole to understand addition. You can solve addition problems by counting up and counting on, and you can use number lines to add. Way to go! Addition is all about using parts to find a whole, and it's one of the kinds of math we use the most. Try to find some examples of addition in the world around you. You might be surprised how math is all around us. See you soon. Hey, hey.